So I'm ending my last lecture on the early American societies, and um, it's it's interesting because I feel I, I just want to admit that this is one of the weakest areas of knowledge that I have. I mean, I, I hope you can appreciate that when you're trying to teach World Civ, trying to know the entire world is a lot of work, um, and so I hope that my lectures have uh, proved to you that there you know a certain amount of knowledge about many given areas is possible for a human being um, but uh, one must admit that uh, uh, one finds pockets that are stronger than others and I think you might have seen probably inferred uh, easily where uh, certain topics that I had a, a stronger hold on than you know, others and I feel frustrated with myself that I don't have strong knowledge of this uh, history because first of all I live geographically in this hemisphere and so Native American culture Native uh, uh, Central American and South American um, you know, I, I, I feel like that should be something that we're all, that, that are, if, if, if we're, you know, we might be descendants, some of us of, well, we're, you know, many of us are descendants of Europeans or even of other uh, non-European countries coming here now. But, um, you know, here we are in this land and not knowing much about it. It's just, uh, I think it's kind of, uh, it's something I realize that I need to really work harder at uh, um, knowing more. Having said that, I feel that I'm going to be able to, in this lecture, this brief set of lectures, give you the taste that I have also been exposed to. And again, we hope this inspires us to learn more. But also to admit that it's not just, it's not necessarily always just a lack of interest. We come to the difficulty that we've had when we talked about some of the other cultures when you don't have things left behind in writing in, in vast quantities. And this is the kind of luck, if you will, or um, privilege of many cultures that we call civilization because they've narrated a story about themselves. And so, um, you know, that then, that's what we have to work with. And um, it becomes a challenge to reconstruct civilizations that have disappeared and we have statues and pictures and that's it and and you know so that that's also a challenge um so i just want to address that i'm going to address that more now let's talk about this picture <laughs> that i have here um this was put together by a an, an artist uh, uh from latin america um or south america however you want to turn uh, term the southern hemisphere of this uh portion of the world <laughs> um and, I, and here's why I, I, I put this up. It says, this is not America. He threw this up here. I think this was in New York. And he said, this is not America's flag. And then he puts this down here as America. Now, what's going on? Is this an attack on our identity as Americans? And it's you know, conveniently placed right here by U.S. Armed Forces. You know, what he's saying is, is no. If we feel threatened by this saying this is not America, we're forgetting that people in South America also consider themselves American. In fact, I got to tell you, I was reading, I was doing research on the Cuban Revolution, and I was reading uh, some of the works of Che Guevara. And, um, you know, whether you like him or, or don't like him, he's a controversial character. Anyways, having said that, if you know who I'm talking about, he started talking about America. And I got confused because I thought it was. I thought he's not sound like he's talking about you know the, the place I live. He's not talking about the United States of America. He's talking about you know Latin, the the Spanish speaking and Portuguese speaking America. He's talking about America south of north. <laughs> okay, and so um, wouldn't you admit as a, as as, as members of the United States of America, how much do we think about this very hemisphere, really? And then when you take my uh, Western Civ 107 class, I talk about how 
the U.S. militarily and economically has, has massively intervened in this part of the world. And of course, for the, uh, the native peoples here, the people here before us, we obviously had a major effect on. We completely uh, annihilated or dislocated, removed, replaced the people that were here before. And so, um, you know, but how much of them do we know about? What do we know about? What do we know? And so I just kind of want to remind that for us. So <clears throat> while I might lack the expertise on this particular area, I want to remind us of something that that's very interesting about that, that I know more about the Middle East than I do the very geographic location that I live in. And um, I've had easier access to learn that. That's something that's very telling that we should think about, right? Um, you know, we, but, but, you know, and it's not just something, I mean, think about it. as Americans, how much we know about Canada, Canada, and Mexico are our neighbors. The only two countries we share borders with, how much do you know? Nothing. Maple syrup, burritos, right? What, what do you know? So I, I just kind of want to point that out. You know, we, we, we definitely need to broaden our horizons and really even just focus on our location. Sometimes we might learn quite a bit in doing that. So anyhow, now that I'm done preaching to you and myself, we're moving on. So just to kind of address American continental history, it's interesting, our name, um, you know, that we, you know, Americans, North Americans, people from the United States of America, we often say America, you know, is that proverbial America, America, right? What's the name? Where's it come from? Well, an Italian explorer and cartographer, a person who makes maps, demonstrated that Brazil and the West Indies were not Asia, entitled them Mundos Novos, the New World, Novos. And his name was Amerigo Vespucci, Amerigo. Now, uh, Martin Waldseemuller, uh, I took German, but I think I just tore that up anyways. Um, <laughs> This German uh, uh, geographer published in 1507 a map designating America in honor of Amerigo. It was common to place the feminine ah uh, after the name for something like a map for uh, the masculine Amerigo. So when you say I'm proud to be an American, just know that you're naming yourself, that we're, that we're named after an Italian map makers put into the feminine by a German map maker. Okay, just to let you know. Okay. And here is a, a kind of conception at the time of um, a map of the world. You can see that humans were somewhat limited in their understanding. And historians have had debates about um, the places in which people migrated. Now, you notice I said Native Americans or indigenous people. You know, it's true, whether you're talking about the Celts of the British Isles, whether you're talking about Sami people in Scandinavia, or you talk about, um, you know, the, uh, the people here in this hemisphere, no matter where you go, for the most part, humans did at one time come from somewhere else. Human history is a story of migrations. And some people just migrated much, 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 much longer, uh, much, much uh, uh, further back in time than other people. S and some come in peacefully into land with very little uh, um, other human populations, and other times it's it's not the case. Um, but um, there's a lot of different theories about the origins of the original. Uh, people that we talk about original meaning non-Europeans that were first on this continent uh, on, the, on the two parts the north and the south and the central um, uh, Yeah, I feel like I lost my train of thought there. Okay, I'm gonna move on here. So by the 16th century This is for the most part what the north looks like and um, some of, of the different tribes and um, you know, here on the East Coast, we're meeting the colonists from Europe very early on. And, um, you know, all the way over here to where we are in the Northwest uh, uh, here. And um, so anyhow, I just this would help illustrate, oops, 
my phone. Um, I will stop there and I will return to um, the next lecture.